everyone, this is the State of the Nation. Did you manage to catch the opening of the fourth session of the ninth parliament? Did you listen to the throne speech or policy statement of President Rani Vikram Singh? Well, if you didn't, we don't blame you. You didn't miss much. There wasn't anything significant that was already said before. CD Tatiak Matadunna, Gite Matukawa, Rata Hara Noyami, Adamage Kata Vempasu, E Gita Vikasha Nekar and Kia. Mama Rupo and in Ali Kawaling, Illa Sitino. Pasukia Kale Tulagat, Pior and Isa, may Pidene, Hemin Heming, Adukaranda, Apata Puluang Vela Tieno, then Arctic Kisiam Stavrek, Etivela Tibino, Arctic Arbudakari, Avastavaka, Uddamani Ileano, Badumila Vaduino, Rakia, Anaturta Patuino, Via Para Kadavatino, Badubara Vaduino, Samaje, Sielukota Swelta Jiva Twenta Amari. Namut Tava Masa Park Hai Ketikalak, me Amaru Vinadara Gatot, Apata Visunumak Pete Yanta Puluang, me system change eka Aram Biak Pamanai, Apatawat Boho Venas come up Sidukale Utui, Sri Lanka Vasi Inge, Vishesha in Taruna Tarunangi Adahasanua, E Venas come Kriatma Kirimata, Apa Bala Portueno, E Nisa Idri Visipa Vasari Visipatula, Apa Anugamane Kalutu Patipati. Ha kriya pili vet pili madhe yojana idhir pat karan kiya mama oba samagi ma illa city noa. E illi ma mama karan ne me sabave city no oba samagi ma vitarak ne mei mulu mahat Sri Lanka ke an gen ma oba Lanka ve city at videshe ka city at obe adhas idhir pat karna rata yali godanagvi me saami ka vyaya me ta ekwan. Oh, what we didn't hear in that speech was a proper concrete plan of getting out of this crisis. What are the steps we can take? Do we have any idea as to how we can overcome this situation? Do we even know how deep we are in this crisis? Instead, all we heard was why he was implementing IMF recommendations and why the IMF is the only way forward. In fact, at one point he did say, if you have a better idea, please let him know. President Ranil Vikramasinghe delivered his State of the Union type of address minutes after U.S. President Joe Biden mumbled some sentences uh, to America in what was called his State of the Union address. If you listen to U.S. President Joe Biden's and Ranil Vikramasinghe's speeches, you will see two leaders in two parts of the world who are very much detached from their people. And during the Independence Day message to the nation, President Rani Wickremesinghe said that he is going to present a 25-year plan to revive this nation. But did you hear anything of that sort during his speech to Parliament? As usual, the IMF story keeps coming up. And the President said that we should have gone to the IMF prior, and if we did, we wouldn't have been in such a mess. <laughs> ये आधुरदार्शी तीर न्याक वर्तमान काटे उत्तर टे बालपाती बिनो इट अमतरो सहाय लाभागत तहक के अनिक एकम पार्श्व वाण्य ज्ञातांत्रे मूल्य आरमुदल पमनाई इधरी गामट इधरी गामने यामट हक के ओन सामग ऐतिकरगान्ना पादनव माताई ये हैरेंट आपटे विनत किसुद मार्ग एक नह अपयान गमन मग विवेचनीय करन देशपालन Venat Vikalpa Margak Atnam Ayame Sabavata Idiripat Karna Lesai. So why didn't we go to the IMF? Who's responsible for not doing so? Going to the IMF or not going to the IMF is government policy. Different governments can take decisions as to what economic decisions they are going to take. Look at the circumstances. During the twenty eight weeks that I was the governor. Sri Lanka raised nearly $4 billion without the IMF. That is why we were able to settle some of the bank's outstandings. We were able to make sure that there were a lot of imports that had to be done were done. We settled the loans and we were able to continue without any bankruptcy being announced. Now it is 48 weeks since we approached the IMF. We still haven't got one cent. We have got a promise of $2.9 billion over four years, which means about $362 million every six months. Now, if we had approached the IMF 
at the time that I became the governor. And we had been successful in getting the money the next day itself. That's not possible, but if you had, if you assume that way, you would have seen that we could have only have raised three hundred sixty-two million dollars, and Sri Lanka would have had only three hundred sixty-two million dollars for the six months from outside, because there would have been no other bilateral lender who would have lent money to us. Today we are struggling to even find one dollar from anyone else from outside. So these are the choices. People can take choices. That's one side of the story. The other side is. When you access the IMF, what are the conditions that you have to meet? We will leave aside the restructuring part for the time being. But even if you leave that aside, there are so many other factors that we need to be looking at. IMF will want certain conditions to be met. The public service to be cut drastically. Now we have already started that as we all see. Taxes to be raised and very heavy taxes are being imposed now. Then you need to have the pass through of all the prices for petrol, for diesel, for kerosene, for electricity and all that. Can people afford all that? That is one side of it. Then you also have a contracting economy. I can, as you can see now, last year after we have approached the IMF, Sri Lanka contracted by 11 percent. This year also we are expecting to, uh, the economy to contract by at least 4.5 percent. Now in such a contraction of the economy, can real can the real economy sustain itself? How many people are without jobs today? How many, people, how many people's contracts have been suspended? How many construction contracts have been stopped? My answer to this vexed question, there will not be a real right answer, but people will have to weigh the consequences of both decisions. Well, that was the former governor, Ajit Nivad Cabral, responding to why Sri Lankan didn't go to the IMF uh, prior, as mentioned by the president in his policy statement. Now, when analyzing the policy statement, we can see what's to come. Sri Lanka's road towards recovery will be as tough as nails. But if we can't learn from our past mistakes, then what good are we? We all can agree that everyone with a blunt brain in the governing or political sector and almost all the Colombo liberals think that IMF is bay. IMF will kiss us and make our pain go away. So the only way to learn whether their policies will work now is to look at their past actions and what they would mean to us in the future. Mind you, all the policies implemented uh, right now are of what they did in the past, uh, particularly from 2015 to 2019 period. Join me now uh, from the data board is Danidu good to see you once again. Uh, Danidu, now, I know you've been looking at uh, the policies that we had uh, in, from 2015 to 2019 and we see a resurgence of that same policies being implemented right now. So we know it is the IMF, it is the IMF recommendation, the IMF wants us to do these kinds of things. Now in order to understand what would happen to the country once you implement these policies? We have we have some kind of a reference, which is from 2015 to 2019. I think it was the 16th time that we went to the IMF and tried to implement those uh, plans. So what happened uh, during that particular period of time? I, I'm really uh, surprised that we had to remind people of this, but apparently we have to do that. So what happened? Yes, uh, Mahesh, I think uh, the, the reason this is going to come up multiple times is because these kind of nar narratives were used by the SLPP to come into power. But hey. that doesn't mean that uh, you know, it doesn't hold any weight. I'm going to quickly go over the exact effect of this violent sort of like taxation, the austerity that took place. Now we saw things like the nation building tax, the, the value added tax going up. We saw a personal income tax. And it was a huge complaint. We saw a lot of uh, people complaining about inflation during those times as well because the primary motive of the IMF was to balance the budget, the primary budget. And you explain this in the future as well. Now we see here a massive drop, Mahesh. I'm going to take a closer look at this massive drop because this is the year we, are, we just wanted to show from 2000 to 2020. This massive drop, when you take a closer look, we see that these are the years between when the, when the government, excuse me, when the new government came into play with the rhetoric of you know stolen money and everything. You, you're talking about 20, 2015 to 2019. Exactly. You're talking about the good governance. The good governance. That was exactly their narrative. So with these policies, we expect at least to you know have a certain flat line. We didn't see a flat line. The GDP, the real GDP growth taken from the central bank, Mahesh, shows that the, the total product 
the products and services, the total of that has consistently gone down. So now the taxation is far more violent, we might see something worse. Indeed, um, this happened like what, six, seven years ago, uh, and we still have to keep reminding people what happened back in 2015, the pay tax, we saw a lot of protests. Uh, we, I mean, I don't know whether people remember the, uh, the time that the whole golf phase was filled with protesters back then. What were they uh, protesting at that time? Uh, high cost of living, pay taxes, unbearable taxes, all that. And we are seeing a very much of the same happening right now. And it's sad that people keep forgetting. But I guess that's why we are here, that Hindu, to remind them. All right, that is the Tharma Sam the data board. So let's get reactions to the president's policy statement. Joining me now is the uh, State Minister of Finance, Shan Semasinga. Minister, thank you very much for your time. Uh, good to see you once again. Now, what is your reaction, Minister, to the president's policy statement? I know you are part of the government, but what was said is mostly against the narrative of what the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna campaign for back in 2019. Now, do you agree with the policy statement of the current president? And if so, do you then agree that your policies pitched back in 2019 were wrong? Uh, it's a good question. Actually, uh, it's a bit hard question to answer also. If we look at from a conventional political ideology, what you are saying could be right. But I think we have to move away from that uh, political ideology because uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, things are different now. One, uh, the main crisis we are going through, the economic crisis, and then uh, the expectations of uh, the youth of this country, and how we build confidence and make sure that all contribute uh, to uphold the economy and uh, to retain in Sri Lanka. So when you uh, see the present uh, issues we are facing and the global impacts we have, I think uh, in my view the president uh, gave the right path and the correct picture of what sort of uh, economic crisis we are in. We all know that uh, we are trying to come out of this crisis and everybody is hoping the majority is uh, hoping that we'll come out of this crisis as early as possible but there is a major uh, there is a minority uh, which thinks uh, their political ideology can be established on grassroots level if this crisis continues for a further six to six months or more more than that so uh, economy is uh, becoming uh, stabilized not the ideal stabilization that we want to have but uh, you know people are, are not suffering the way they used to suffer about uh, six, seven months back. So if you look at the policy statement and, uh, and you were talking also about uh, what we campaigned in 2019, yes, things are different now. So we have to adapt to the changes and uh, make sure that we all get together, uh, keep aside our political uh, mismatches all get together and make sure that people get confidence that the country will come back to a normal uh, 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 livable country. So this is what our intention is and anybody who is trying to disturb this, taking small uh, political ideologies will only make sure the country will go from bad to us. Indeed, I understood. Uh, Minister, uh, since I have you here, uh, where are we with regard to the IMF bailout plan? The bailout plan seems to have the Balagiri Dosha or something. It's not today, it's tomorrow kind of situation. Well, uh, I don't agree with you on that. Uh, the reason is uh, it's a very complex process. I mean, IMF uh, process just do does not focus only on giving this bailout package and uh, ensuring we get the lost confidence from the rest of the world and access to the capital markets. It, it goes beyond that, you know, to, to, for this bailout package to be executed, there are a lot of adjustments that we have to do within our system. Uh, the fiscal policy, the monetary policy and all the other aspects of accountability and how do we ensure uh, that you know this kind of uh, uh, repeat story will not take place back in the country. So you know it's a very complex process. It's a lengthy process. Why it is complex and lengthy is to ensure that you know all uh, 
all member states are uh, are not affected by uh, by a deviation of a decision of one country so we have now uh, got uh, financial assurances from the paris club including japan and the us and uh, their members we have got the assurances from india and uh, the bondholders have given their assurances to uh, to uh, the imf china the exim bank has given assurance of course uh, there are bilateral discussions taking place and there are further requirements to be fulfilled so if you take the prior actions in uh, getting the economy stabilized and thereafter from 2025 to look at a growth we have done fiscal adjustments i know those adjustments are Uh, i mean quite uh, difficult adjustments for a political party or a leader or a government to take because none of those uh, decisions will make the government popular it will make the government unpopular but however if somebody uh, is not willing to take this uh, challenge and take the country back on track the country will go it will be a disastrous situation in the future so so we have uh, we are doing this and we are very confident that by within the first quarter that we should get the uh, approvals of the imf executive board that means we will have access back to the market and will be uh, accepted by rest of the world uh, and we can march forward uh, keeping out all what happened in the past and look at a new uh, present and a future all right the uh, state minister of finance shan sem singh we have to leave it at that leave it at that thank you very much all right uh, so what does the opposition think about the policy statement yes you are right they disagree this is not ground breaking stuff the government has focused only on revenue and unfortunately in increasing taxes they have squeezed the middle class particularly the low middle class and the tax free threshold basically needs to be increased we have been making that point from the beginning because why do you want to create another dependent class out of people who are going daily to work they're taking care of themselves their families their children their grandparents and are not dependent on the state and that is why we have asked them to increase that uh, yesterday the president referred to and said that will cost 63 billion rupees first is i contest the number of 63 billion rupees and there are ways of actually making that number because we are not saying that you shouldn't be taxing we stand with that principle but we then we will obviously have to tax those at the higher income rates but we have to protect those in the middle so that life can go on we can't solve one problem by creating another problem the other issue is that the president never referred to the issue of expenditure you know if you're running a home you're running a business if there's a crisis the first thing you look at is expenditure no mention of expenditure we have an inefficient public service everybody knows that we are in the icu as an economy and as a people we are in the icu that throne speech did not address it well that was the member of the samagi janabala vega parliamentarian iran vikram ravna with uh, the opposition's rebuttal to president vikram singh's policy statement now there is another faction i'm curious to know what they think the very same people who brought the former president to power and now have managed to form a break away faction of their own joining me now is a uh, former minister of mass media dr nalaka gudeheva and now part of the sri lanka pod janaparamuna's rebel faction the freedom people's alliance dr gudeheva was very much instrumental in the economic narrative of former president gotabe rajpaksa he joins me now uh, to give his take on the current president's uh, way forward uh, thank you very much doctor really appreciate uh, you taking the time to speak to me uh, doctor good to see you uh, i want you your take uh, on the president's policy statement delivered last week now what do you have to say about the uh, the vision he is proposing and the path uh, he plans for this country now according to your sound economic mind are we on the right track mahesh thank you very much when you talk of president's vision i think you are referring to his this week's vision because his vision changes all the time he's very famous for not just throne speech the policy statements i remember 2015 2019 uh, this uh, person as prime minister presented 10 different policy statements now he has started the same practice once again now uh, within 6 uh, 7 months of his coming to pre- as president now he's making i think third statement like this so his this week statement is also another waste of time as far as i'm concerned there's absolutely nothing in that um, 
Doctor, it's a little bit contradictory. You and your former party, the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, were given all the power by the people of this country back in 2019. You clearly had everything, but couldn't manage to deliver. So why should we believe what you have to say right now when you were given the opportunity, you couldn't do it. But when someone else is trying to do it, you have the usual politics at play and opposes it. Is it really fair that you are now criticizing the current president's policy and his government? First of all, the current president's policies are not our policies. He is a guy whom we rejected all the time. We actually fought against his regime in 2019 and also in 2020 uh, parliamentary election and we rejected him. And people rejected him outright. He couldn't even win, he, win his seat. So now the party that I represented is supporting him to be the president and dictate the policies of the country. So definitely they are not the policies that we promised the people in 2019 and 2020. And the problem that we had between 2019 up to uh, 22 to uh, mid was that the president Gotabi Rajapaksha and his cabinet did not implement what we were promising. We presented a policy statement to the country uh, which was not implemented because it was handed over to a different people, different set of people who never believed in, in that policy. The economic management team of Gotabe Rajapaksha's uh, government is not the one who developed the policy. So I don't think anybody can blame the policy. It is merely because the policy was not implemented that he had to go. All right, uh, we have to leave it at that. Thank you very much. That was the former Minister of Mass Media and member of the Freedom People's Alliance, Dr. Nalika Gudeheva. We're going to take a short commercial break. This is State of the Nation. Back in a moment.